Hey guys, today I'm going to give you an update on Masters 25. It is time to see the cards being spoiled. So we got all the really good mythics and all the valuable cards, but now we get to see where the true value is. So Faithless Looting, Reckless Warm, Wild Mongol, one of my favorite cards of all time. A absolute powerhouse in the old Odyssey format. Phyrexian Tower. This is a incredibly expensive card. Uh, market place value on TCG player is $55. As a rare, that is very good. Now you might be like, this is the cycle with Syrian Gorge, which no one wants to see reprinted. It is the Sarah Sanctum, which is on the reserve list and very expensive. And it also has the Gaia's Cradle. A few hundred dollars for that. Just a green land. So it's nice to see Phyrexian Tower being reprinted. Again, not on the reserve list, but it's close. It's as close as you can get because it's white and green counterparts are on the reserve list and very expensive. Surprisingly, we see Treasure Cruise and Angler. Uh, Treasure Cruise is a bit surprising because of the delve mechanic. Um, obviously, the delve mechanic is featured. It is the Fate Foretold is the artwork on the box. Um, I'm pretty sure that is Fate Foretold. And that's one of the key delve cards, which delve is now banned. So we'll see. The Angler is played in a lot of Jun decks. You would be absolutely shocked to see what the price of an Angler is. They use the old artwork, so the foil place of Anglers I have are now wor pretty much worthless uh, because it's the same artwork. All is Dust, Visions of the Beyond, uh, Conscription, and Glen, Glen Elda Archmage. This card has been reprinted one time before, I believe, in a Master Set. But it is originally from Lorwyn, and now it just got hit again. So it's about a $20, $30 card. I expect its price to fall quite a bit. And it's nice that it is a rare. I think we've gone over all these significant mythics. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a mythic that was missing, uh, given the box toppers would probably feature all the heavy hitters. But overall, like it's a good reprint. Glenn Eldra Archmage is a cool card. I've, I've, always, I've always liked the card. And the Wall of Reverence, Squeeze Back, and the Phyrexian Altar, which I'll get to in a moment. The Phyrexian Altar is very pricey. I think it's $55. It was an invasion, and it's never been reprinted since. So let me repeat that. That's a card that people play in EDH all the time. It's one of the most popular EDH cards. It is $55. It is an invasion. And now it's going to be widely available to everybody. Uh, Gamble was reprinted at least one more one, once. And that's also a good reprint. So they're really hitting uh, Vexing Devil again is another good reprint. They're hitting everything of value. And I'm almost certain that this uh, makes sense. Uh, the Master Series, I don't like the price point per box, but the way they did it makes sense. So they went over a list of all the most valuable rares and mythics, and they just reprinted them verbatim based on this list. Uh, so there is a recognition of the secondary market here, which is good. Um, I think when you buy, an, this product is interesting because it's at a price point they don't know. And whenever they don't have, they have a price point they don't know of. Uh, the six ninety nine being the original modern master price point, they tend to overvalue. They tend to put more stuff in it. And once they have an understanding of the price point, like nine ninety nine, they tend to put less stuff, as we've seen from Iconic and Masters twenty five. Uh, that clearly was them putting less in it than uh, if they had to explore this price point. So I like it. Uh, I really do like it. It is cards that, in my opinion, uh, when you talk about Magic the Gathering and it being a card game, it should be affordable. Uh, at this point in time, no one should have any inklings. No one should be offended if their collection, which is modern and standard, go down in price. This is the way it is, and this is the way it will continue to be. Uh, cards that are over $50 need to be reprinted, and they will be reprinted. Uh, now, I was going to make another video about uh, Origins, Magic Origins. There was a YouTuber, Rudy, who really liked the set. 
Um, and now people, and he said the same things that people were saying about this being the last master set for a while or no more master sets after this, how they're going to do reprints. Uh, I wouldn't trust them uh, when they say that. I think they're just saying it to sell the box. Uh, these boxes will sell incredibly well given the price point of the rares. I'm not so much impressed by the mythics, but the rares are where the majority of the value comes from. The rares, the uncommons, and the commons, just because that in a box there's less variance. I think variance is not good. Variance is for gambling people, but it's not good for a card game, right? Like you, should, like when you open, I've always felt kind of offended that uh, you go to a casino and you know that you're there. So the casino has a better facility than you. It has a better facility because it takes your money away, right? Uh, but for Magic, when it's just a, a card game, really. I don't think it should still have the same mentality of a casino where you, you just have to gamble in packs and hope for expedition. But it kind of does. So I don't know how that can change. I just think that there's some card games where they reprint everything and they make it very cheap. Like Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon just reprinted the most expensive card they had for a while, Tapu Lele. And it's in a promo. So it's a $4 promo, right? Zorak, um, a full art Zorak, which is the second most expensive card for a while. That's been reprinted as a promo. So in my opinion, there are ways that you can do it with um, better. Now, I'm impressed by this set. It's not, I'm still going to keep to what I said where I don't want to buy this set for uh, reasons that, you know, I don't want them to continue having more and more expensive sets. I don't think that's necessary. The quality of cards they chose to reprint is very good. So I give them props for that. They're, I mean, I didn't expect Phyrexian Tower. I mean, how could I expect that? That card has only been Ursa Saga, which is many moons ago. And it's a $50 card. I mean, people are dropping the price right now because they know it's reprinted. But before, it was a $50, $55 card. And we and you already see the price going down to twenty nine ninety nine for near mint. So you see, like overpowered games has a thirty two dollar copy for damage. Well, clearly they didn't change their price yet, but clearly top tie games has changed its price because why would you sell a thirty dollar? Why would anyone buy a damage copy for more than a near mint copy? The answer is it's always fascinating to see who changes their price first and who changes their last it would be nice i know we saw kitchen finks uh, which is good it would be nice to see some more uncommons that are valuable uh the commons look pretty good in my opinion angler as a foil is very expensive um i don't know it should be quite interesting because at the end of the day uh, there is a lot of secondary market value and i think we should just reprint it all Everyone now has a good understanding of that you should not invest in modern or standard. Like if you, Tomogoyf got reprinted again. If you invest in Tomogoyf, okay, first time they reprinted it, fine. They caught you with your pants down. But then after the second, third, fourth time, I mean, how many times do you need uh, it to be reprinted before you realize, okay, I should buy this card because I want to play over it, not because I'm hoping to make money from it. I've always... I will say that I said this two years ago, and I'll say it again. Um, I have no doubt that the secondary market will eventually stabilize. A car, every single card will be around. Un, there will be very few cards over a hundred. The majority of cards are going to be under fifty. There will be very few cards over a hundred. The majority of cards that are over a hundred today are going to end up at fifty or less. There's one card that's missing, uh, Mox Opal, and that's an interesting one. Uh, let me, but I'm almost certain that they kept Mox Opal to put in something else, uh, maybe a new set. The Mox Opal is definitely getting reprinted sometime soon, but it's not in the master set. Otherwise, it would be a box topper. I mean, yeah, Mox Opal would be beautiful as a box topper. Now, Mox Opal was reprinted as an expedition, but that doesn't really count because there's so few of them. Um, I'm intrigued to see where it ends up. It could end up in a standard set. Uh, in all seriousness, because if we're saying that there's no master sets in the horizon, that there's that's the only one that I think is really missing here from a modern standpoint is the Opal. Uh, I, I everything else they hit, 
Um, it's literally like they took a list of the top 10 or the top 15, 25 most expensive mythics and they went down the row. Uh, and everything is pretty much accounted for uh, in terms of playable decks. And the Opal is the only one missing, so... I'm almost certain they didn't forget the Opal. Uh, that's a pretty obvious one in the Affinity and the uh, the Tron decks. It's also in uh, the Ironworks uh, combo deck. So it's in three of the top five decks in Modern right now. The Opal is being used. Uh, it is, it's also used in Infect. So, I mean, maybe out of the top 10 decks, it's in four or five of them. And that's the one missing. Uh, they hit High Arc, which is good. And we'll see. I mean, it's going to be interesting in the next few... Um, but again, no one should go into playing Magic in Standard and Modern and expect to make money from this game. Like, you should not do that. And as long as you kind of... And I'll be honest, I was very offended when they first started reprinting these cards because I thought, in my back of my mind, that my cards would keep going up and up and up. That's not owed to you. The secondary market is not owed to anybody. So yeah, this is a good move. Anyway, bye guys. Oh, also, you might notice um, a new person on the channel. Uh, just go with it. Go with it. See what happens. He'll be on the channel all week, um, and we'll see what happens. Bye.